Dear Swami, who is omnipresent, always with us, I thank you for being our friend and our support. And I offer this talk, a brief talk to you, and pray that your love comes through the talk, and brothers and sisters. Well, just a couple of words, and I'm going to just tell you a, a couple of uh, little events that happened uh, during uh, Swami's birthday, because uh, we're living at a time when Swami's alive, and uh, we have the grace of uh, devotees going back and forth, it seems like uh, we, I mean, so many of us do it. It's just uh, 12,000 miles, you know, uh, one way. What a grace that is that the people come and go and we're able to bring back news of what uh, Swami is doing. He is, of course, extraordinary. And it's nice when we're able to bring back some of his energy if, uh, if I'm able to do a little of that. So uh, this was a very small birthday. It's Swami's 71st birthday. You know, he's still in this form, 71 years old. And we don't really think of him as a 71-year-old man. Uh, we just keep on thinking, you know, that he's going to be with us until 96, like he says. But what a form this is. It was a small birthday because there was a cyclone that uh, was uh, around Madras. A lot of people were killed. And Swami told uh, his devotees to stay home because uh, there was so much problem in that area. So uh, the, uh, the birthday celebration was actually uh, held mostly in front of the Mandir. Now, you know, there's this hall. I don't even know the name of it, right in front of the Mandir. And it was like a large living room. And Swami was there with us all day long. That is, in the morning we'd come, you know, at 6 o'clock, it started coming for darshan, and we and Swami would then come out, and he would be there for uh, three hours. And then we'd come out again for darshan, he'd be there for three hours. And then in the evening there would be all of these cultural events where people from different countries would give dances and songs and plays, and Swami was there for another two to three hours. So we were able to just be with Swami day in and day out. It was really quite extraordinary feast, because so many years we've, uh, so many lifetimes we've been alive, praying to just to have a glimpse of Swami. And there he was, playing in front of us all day long. And in so many different moods. You see, that during this birthday celebration, one day was taken up with the birthday itself. Great fanfare, great music, the bands played. Swami was in white and came down and uh, made an appearance and gave a wonderful discourse. And his devotees sang to him and it was filled with love. All of the area in front of the Mandir, filled with people from all over the world. I, I just don't know any place at all that you see such an event where it's obvious that uh, Swami's love is so potent that it has extended all over the world, attracting people all over, giving them peace and solace and comfort. The Bosnians, the Russians, the Chinese, the Iranians, the Iraqians, the Balkan uh, area, uh, all uh, the, the South America, the, all, the whole world was there. At this time, the Africans and the Chinese in bigger number. And uh, so that this wonderful birthday on the 23rd of November. And the day before that, uh, his university had this commencement uh, exercise uh, where everybody got dressed up in their gowns and caps, and, uh, and Swami is the chancellor of the university. And the new vice chancellor is uh, Venkatarama. His name is Venkatarama. He's a very uh, prominent uh, physicist in India. And um, Swami brought him in pretty quick. I think he only has known Swami about five years, and all of a sudden, boom! And he gave a wonderful talk about all the great things that are happening in the university and all the doctorate degrees and the undergraduate degrees, and it was wonderful. And it was lovely to see all the students, Swami's students. You know, I mean, Swami's been here now 71 years, and all of this, of course, the Purnachandra Auditorium, the Great Hall in front of the Mandir, the Great Mandir, all of the university, the Super Specialty Hospital, the Great Auditoriums, the uh, Planetarium, the Great Stadium, the Great Administration Building, and centers all over the world. It takes your breath away if you can see it. And there is Swami, day in and day out, in front, with all of his devotees loving them and giving them presents, just giving them. I've never seen anybody give like this. One day before the Ladies' Day, this was another wonderful event, Ladies' Day. I mean, the 19th of November from now until eternity is Ladies' Day. And the ladies did not let us forget it. And the men just sit looking like this, and the ladies, and Swami told everybody how great the ladies were. But for two days beforehand, he was handing out saris. Now, when Swami's handing out saris, it's something to watch hour after hour for a 71-year-old person all through the whole area, and then walking around and giving darshan. Everybody's trying to touch his feet, and they want to say something to Swami, or just get a glimpse from Swami. All day long, he is administering like that and giving out these saris. 
Uh, Goswami had picked my wife out with a number of other ladies and brought her up and gave her a special sari for the ladies' day. It was tremendous. The Swami uh, created the entire universe. He's, he really knows how to put on a show. When any of the events start, Swami goes, boom, you know, and um, then it started on Ladies' Day after he had given out all this, these saris. And, you know, he's giving out sari after sari. He'll be in the middle of a crowd and look at the sari, look at the person, give it, take it back. And then he himself will run all the way to the temple like a little child. I, you've, never, you've got to see it. And then come back just holding one little sorry, you know, sort of oblivious of everybody there, just wanting to have a glimpse from him, just like a little child, and gives it to the person. Something to see Swami. You wonder, is he just doing it uh, just automatically to uh, tens of thousands, or is he knowing exactly who everybody is? It's really quite obvious he knows exactly who everybody is, and most people feel he doesn't know anything about them. This is the miracle of Swami. Just like the regular world, we know he must be there someplace, but he doesn't look like he's any place. You know, we look all over and we don't know where is God. The Swami is right with you, and you know he is a divine form. And yet, he does, you believe in a, just a moment that he doesn't know anything about you, that you're grasping at straws, you start doubting, all kinds of things. You develop a relationship with Swami, filled with love. You have a great insight into his greatness, and then the uh, relationship begins. And this relationship has to be very faithful relationship because it's tested very hard. Because as soon as you develop a relationship with somebody, you begin to project all your pain and everything on them. It's so very well known in psychiatry. It's called transference. Everything comes out on the other person. And uh, so we we have a, this real powerful figure. And before we know it, everything comes out. If we've been abused or abandoned or hurt or anything at all, and we start crying and moaning and, and screaming within a day. So. <clears throat> I mean, we're just, we're, we're with him and he's showing us all this greatness. He's showing people from all over the world are coming to him. I mean, that's no small thing. It's a international, large international community. There, from every corner of the world, people are there. Not only that, people then want to take him into their heart and be with him all day long, chant his name, offer everything to him. Now, I had the opportunity while there to act as a psychiatrist. And there was a Western medical camp, and I was a psychiatric consultant. It was really a, a lot of fun. I mean, it's not fun to see people who have a psychological problem. Uh, but <laughs> to work with side brothers and sisters from around the world, the Western countries, who want nothing more to do but to lay their skill down at Swami's feet and be able to say, Sai Baba, you know, anytime they want. And everybody understands. You know, generally in our everyday working, we say Sai Baba, and somebody look at you like... Uh, where are you from? But there, everybody knows who Swami is and loves him like the Dickens. Uh, and so, and everybody wants to offer themselves in this unified way. It was such a wonderful clinic. There's a, a number of stories to tell about the clinic and about running around and the, the psychiatric emergencies. And because you see how people want to see Swami so much inside, want to talk to him so much inside. If they make a mistake, pretty soon uh, they're hallucinating. And I saw a number of these kinds of, uh, of cases, I, I could really talk to you about some of the uh, interesting uh, cases. So Swami's birthday, the commencement exercise, the Ladies' Day, Rama's Day. There was a time when they took the statues out of the uh, Mandir with great gusto and great dancing and sound and music and paraded them around. And uh, these events happening all the time, Swami giving uh, talks, Swami being with us all the time, it just filled all of us with uh, great joy. Seeing all brothers and sisters together, Swami would spend a, a few hours with us walking through the crowd, and then he would call his boys up, and before you knew it, he would have these uh, great big plates of ladus, you know, these uh, sweets. And within a short while, tens of thousands in front of the uh, mandir all had a little piece of uh, food, and they would be eating it and loving it. And uh, it would be so sweet to watch everybody eating a piece of candy from Swami Old, tough people, you know, and young little kids and everybody liking to eat their little candy and looking at the Swami. He is just extraordinary and is building a, a large, wonderful family that is a international family. We meet here and we think that we're isolated and alone, but we are actually part of a family that is, if you went to Hong Kong, if you went to Africa, any of the, uh, most of the uh, areas in Africa, if you went to Russia, if you, there would be, be a f side brothers and sisters who would tell the same story and giggle the same way. Millions and millions. It's really quite a thing to see, so vital and so vibrant there, so uh, glorious.
The first psychiatric emergency was uh, a Russian lady, the interpreter for the Russian group, the strongest one in the group. Uh, evidently, her sadhana was very strong, too. And uh, this was one. She became mute while in the mandir. They had to take her out of the mandir, had a brief disorganizational state. We had a medicator and people from Berlin let her stay in the room. And we got a, a support group. And uh, she turned out to be a lovely person who saw this in the spiritual light, the whole terrible ordeal that she had to go through. And as a result, I got a chance to speak to the Russians because she was a part of the Russian group. Met the Russian group, and then I spoke to uh, an international group the last day I was there. It was just filled with a sense of Swami's international extension with his, with the innocence of his love, the purity of his love. One time he started a discourse and he said, God is pure love. God is full pure love. You'll never understand, though. He said that not only does he direct and control and create all of the game, he comes in as an actor also, and you're always fooled. You can never understand him. That just uh, makes the game more exciting and more uh, vibrant and wonderful. Swami was so beautiful and so lovely. I, I, I have to go again very, very, very soon. Now a couple of words about what it was to um, take part in Ladies' Day. You know, Swami went like this, and then the ladies started to chant. Vedic uh, chants, and then comes the uh, band, all dressed up in a uh, beautiful band outfit with the band hats and uh, blowing and clunking and, and, and drums and everything, and the drum majorette going plunk, 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 and walking with a real high step, and I started to cry just watching that, you know, because the, the ladies wanted to love Swami and show him so well, and they paraded in front of him in all this parade dress, and then younger girls dressed up and all colorful. Uh, they're dancing and singing and, and uh, making sounds and noise, and, and Gita was there all dressed up. It was, a, it was just a wonderful, exciting time. One lady, a long-time devotee in uh, L.A., was talking to Sharon and saying that uh, she had just come back, and Swami just lavished tremendous love on her, uh, brought her up many times, a number of interviews, gave her a presence and materialized objects and talked intimately about her life and give her advice. And, and uh, Swami said, I know that you didn't expect this this trip, did you? Because Swami can walk right by you, you know, for a year or two or five or ten and not and make you look like you don't even exist. And she says, no, Swami, I didn't expect this. Why? And Swami said, well, it was because you didn't expect anything and because you had no desire. Then Swami turns his grace on you with all of this love. That's why I'm giving you everything, everything. And she just uh, melted. Really, this is the Swami that is beyond any comprehension. Thank God he's living with us, that people are coming and going and being able to bring back some news of his greatness and of his innocence and of his vitality and his realness, and that we should all stay one-pointed and focused on our Swami. And anything that comes out, pain and sorrow and suffering, is nothing but the projections of our own self, our karma coming out, being offered to Swami. He'll accept it, just release it into Swami. And let's get through this uh, incarnation holding on to dear Swami. Sairam, brothers and sisters.